I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm continuing my discussions on how the amplified Rossby waves, so the jet streams, the very strong ridges and the troughs and the ridges and the troughs that circumvent the planet, um, when you reach certain wavelengths of the Rossby wave, so when you get five complete waves around the planet, so high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, then those waves can get stuck. They can re reach a quasi-resonance or a persistent location on the planet. And when the wave number is five, or when the wave number is seven, then those the ridges, which give you heat waves and no precipitation, coincide. They cover um, very, very important crop growing regions of the world in North America for one ridge, in Europe for another ridge, and in Asia for another ridge. And when those things persist for weeks on end, you can lose crop yield um, in these three major crop growing regions. And therefore, you can have a uh, hit to global food supply. And therefore, the prices would go up and it would cause lots of geopolitical un unrest. So I'm talking about the details of that paper and also some other effects that occur with the jet streams due to uh, ongoing abrupt climate change. Okay, so this is the paper here, um, which I was discussing in the, in the previous video. Make sure you watch the previous video first. This is part two. And uh, basically what happens is, um, with wave five and wave seven, you can get a sharp uh, spike here. And this is in the phase of the wave, so the wave can get locked into this sort of position or in this sort of position with wave seven. And with wave six and eight, it's not locked so much, okay? The peak is not as sharp. Um, this is what the wave five looks like um, in terms of the wind velocity, okay? Uh, northward versus southward. And this is in terms of the surface air temperature anomaly. So we have a ridge here, a trough here, a ridge here, a trough here, and so on. This will be repeated one, two, three, four, five times here, and seven times here for wave seven. Okay, so when we get those configurations of the jet stream, then those correspond with different regions in North America, in Europe, and Asia. And we can talk, this is a coincidence analysis to look at when, you know, so when there's a ridge here, how, how often is there a ridge here and a ridge here simultaneously? So you can see trough, ridge, trough, ridge, trough, ridge, trough, ridge, and so on. And when those ridges, so that's with, uh, you know, wave five and wave, this is wave five in particular. Okay. and. Uh, this allows you to determine sort of the probabilities that you'll get a, a locking in those different positions. And this is repeated for wave seven here. So the wavelength is shorter, right? We get more peaks and troughs as we go around the planet. And uh, this is the coincident regions that affect the food growing in North America, in Europe, and in Asia here. Okay, and these, if you align those um, regions for wave five is the dark is the brownish here and for wave seven is the reddish here then those overlap with the mean uh, with with large crop growing regions so this the the shading here the green shading this is the mean crop production ten to, in in terms of uh, 10 million kilocalories okay um, that would be per certain area so these are very important crop growing regions of the world. And when we get locked in wave five, we have a ridge over the um, brown regions here. So food growing is affected here and is affected here and not so much here. Um, and in the red regions, when we have wave seven, we, it affects the food production in underneath the the red, in the red region here, here, and in here, and in here. So significant crop growing regions of the world. And this is looking at summer, and, and we're talking about the crops of 
maize, which is corn, wheat, soybean, and rice. Okay, and uh, when we have uh, this, so for June, uh, July, and August, I believe, June, July, and August, these are the regions here. So this is all the regions, and this is the North America, Europe, and Asia region. And this is when there's uh, no blocking events. That's the crop production here. There's not a drop in um, production. And then when there's a one, one blocking, okay, you get the blue. Okay, this is wave number seven, you get the blue. And when there's more than one blocking event, uh, you get the red. So you get a loss of crop yield in all regions. And this is the regional analysis. So you get most in this case in Europe. And in wave number seven, you get most, in, most loss in Asia. Okay, so basically, this is a problem. The phase locking behavior of waves five and seven pose enhanced risks as heat events tend to occur repeatedly over the same regions. We find that average crop production of all regions combined is affected by, negatively affected by these stuck Rosby waves with a decrease of 4% in summers that feature more than one wave five or wave seven event relative to years with no wave events. Okay. Um, so you get simultaneous, and, they, and there's specific years that they've looked at where there was simultaneous heat and wave events, where there were spikes in food prices. So 2003, 2006, and 2012. And the, the spikes were affected, you know, of course, food prices are affected by a large number of factors like storage, management, accumulated effects of extreme events that occurred in previous years. Um, etc. Um, but they've made a strong um, connection between increases in food prices in um, these years here uh, because of the locking of the Rosby waves in modes 5 and 7. So this is very significant, okay, because, uh, you know, as we get more and more um, anomalous Rosby wave events, are the the risk of global food shortages gets larger and larger. So this is a very significant paper. Okay. Um, now, a couple other factors I want to talk about uh, briefly are, here's a paper, another paper. It's called Size of the Atmospheric Blocking Event, Scaling Law in Response to Climate Change. So understanding the response of the atmospheric blocking events to climate change is, of course, vital interest, potential changes in the blocking area. So the blocking area or the size under the blocking. So the size under the ridges, and that can affect the uh, spatio-temporal characteristics of the extreme event. So it, it can affect the coincidence of extreme heat wave events in the ridges and in the, in the associated troughs, extreme um, precipitation and flooding events and uh, how they happen, uh, the, the connections between different regions, because it's a wave we're talking about, and the temporal characteristics, so how long they occur, okay? Um, so they use some general circulation model climate simulations, and they showed that the size of the blocking events increases with climate change, partic particularly in the Northern Hemisphere by as much as 17%. Okay, so as climate change proceeds, the areas under these ridges or under these troughs, depending on whether, you know, which region you're in, increases. And this is bad news because that means that the crop failures under a ridge would um, increase because more of the crop growing regions would increase, uh, would, be, would be covered under a larger area ridge, obviously. And the size of these blocking events, the size of these ridges, or the size of the troughs where there's flooding, trench rains and flooding, um, that area scales mostly with the width of the jet stream. Okay, so as the jet stream slows because of uh, polar amplification, uh, you know, it slows and gets wavier, it actually gets wider. Okay, this is not talked about so much. And uh, so if you multiply that width 
by the, something called the Kuo scale, which is basically the length of the stationary Rossby waves, or, you know, it's, it's a little bit different from the wavelength, okay? The wavelength is the dis distance of a cycle, but if you follow the track along the actual Rossby wave, the length of that wave, the Kuo scale um, is increasing, so the area underneath the ridge is increasing, you know, as climate change proceeds. So that's what this paper is all about, and I'm not going to go into all of the the details of this paper. There's a lot of analysis here. Um, you can, um, you know, if you're interested in the math and the details, you can you can have a look, uh, you know, dig up the paper yourself. But there's different scaling laws um, for the area that is covered underneath the the ridges, and and there's it depends on these different scale factors here. Um, okay, so there's a lot of math and stuff. But the point is, is as the jet streams you know, as climate change proceeds and worsens, we can get the jet streams becoming, slowing down more and more and becoming wavier and getting locked to, diff because of different features of the earth, like the topography or, so, or orography, like mountains versus valleys, and also by the land-ocean contrast, because there are different temperatures, because of the different natures of, of uh, you know, how water and land heat. Um, you know, the, the high thermal heat capacity of water moderates things, okay, but it can set up temperature, um, it can set up t st strong temperature contrast, and those are in fixed regions, right, where the continents are versus the land, and that can allow the, the Rossby waves to lock to those particular locations. So, as jet, uh, but, so the jet streams also, they get wider as, 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 we, as global climate change accelerates. So the jet stream actually gets wider and the length, you know, as it becomes more meridional, the length of the wave, the, if you follow the path along the jet stream, that length increases. And if you multiply those two together, then that, if that's the area that is underneath and, or, and captured by the ridge, for example, of, of, the, of a jet stream is, is larger. So, so that the area under on the Earth when, where you have more heat and uh, uh, and uh, drought um, increases, and the probability that covers more of of a crop growing region is much higher. Okay, so as we showed in the previous paper, so th this is also conspiring against us. Okay, uh, as climate change proceeds. Um, this was the Michael Mann paper. Uh, you can just Google the title and if you want to learn more about the planetary wave resonances and the extreme weather events, and they talk about the, these high amplitude quasi-stationary atmospheric Rossby waves with a particular wavelength range, zonal numbers six to eight, are happening more and more often because of this quasi-resonant amplification of these waves. It's like a waveguide around the Earth. And, uh, you know, the, the, the crop paper looked at actually five and seven being the worst situations for crop loss. Okay, so that's, uh, and uh, just to say here that none of the climate models, you know, we're getting often, we're getting blocks near, um, there's more and more blocks of the jet stream um, around Greenland. And, um, you know, as climate change proceeds, that's happening more and more often, and none of that is captured in the climate models. So why? And one of the reasons is that most of these climate models, when they look at blocking, this is a, a key paper, latent heat release is very important. Um, so the latent heat that's released in ascending air, so you've got water vapor in the air, it rises because it's hot air, and the, the water vapor condenses into droplets and releases heat, and that fuels storms, but it also adds a lot of heat to the ridge region. So the temperatures go up and up and up in the, under the blocked regions, and that can maintain the block for long periods of time. Okay, so this paper shows that 30 to 45% of the air masses involved in northern hemisphere blocking are heated by more than two Kelvin, with a median heating of more than seven Kelvin in the three days before the arrival of the blocking system. So this latent heat effect is considered to be very important in setting up the blocking and in maintaining the persistence. And the models 
do not account for that. Okay, there's also blocking in the southern hemisphere. Okay, thanks for listening.